Hey guys, what's up? I'm in my kitchen today. It's really chilly outside. I just came in. I haven't quite taken off my outside stuff because I'm still warming up. I figured I would just hang out in here in the kitchen with me because I'm going to be here pretty much all day. I had this broth going from some parts of carcasses um, of chickens that we had done last week. And uh, last night it was done, but I did not have time to can it. I knew I would fall asleep if I if I started. So I put it on the front porch because it was it was freezing last night. And I just went out there and got it. It's nice when the outdoors can be your refrigerator. And now I am ladling this lovely gelatinous broth into these jars and I'm gonna start the pressure canner. Check this out. That's when you know your broth has done well when it's got that much goodness in it making it all jello-y. Will is outside currently and he's finishing bringing the pumpkins in and <clears throat> starting to dig the sweet potatoes. I doubt he'll get through most of that. I'll probably go out there later. He probably won't get them all out because it's a lot. And I was going to be out there today but I started looking around and I have so much food to process so I'm going to hang out in here. Maya just came in from milking. <clears throat> what are you about to do? Take a nap. <laughs> you wish. <laughs> uh, we gotta go dispatch our hog for the weekend. Mm. Somber morning. Yeah. All right. Good job, Sowards. Right. Maya is heading over to Wes's house and processing a hog this morning. Um, he just got done with milking. It's been one of those weeks where if it's just like really the last two weeks leading up to the frost and we do all of our processing as the weather turns. It's just a lot easier to do any sort of butchering outdoors whenever it's not really hot. Um, and this week has been such a crunch. I'm definitely like looking forward to the ease of the holiday season, if that makes any sense. I know it's like super busy and somewhat demanding, but this last couple weeks, it's beautiful, it's wonderful. I'm so thankful I'm not complaining, but it has factually been just a really demanding week. He's getting to the tail end. I've still got quite a bit with all this kitchen work, but it's, it's all good things. The burden of abundance. I mean, like people like you have your hands full. I'm like, I have my hands full of everything I ever wanted. Sometimes it's a lot to juggle but I'm still thankful it's in my hands. <laughs> All right, so I've got my pressure canner over here on the stove. I'm gonna show you guys this, kind of an overview of this process because every time the topic of pressure canning comes up, inevitably somebody tells me that they're massively overwhelmed by the idea of it. I see you out there with your pressure canner still sitting in a box, all of you, because I know there are quite a few. Um, <laughs> time to crack open the box and get something done. One of my favorite things I think that is a really great, like start to pressure canning, just go get a bag of baby carrots or get like a big bag. You get, uh, if you have like a bulk buying club like Costco or Sam's, they'll be really affordable there. Or if you want, you can buy just regular, a big bag, like five pound bag of juicing carrots and peel them and cut them up yourself. Um, I say baby carrots because it's something you can literally just open and can. And if you're trying to learn this, that's sometimes nice for people if they don't have to do a lot of prep work. I have an All-American pressure canner. I've had this for, I don't know, five or six years now. This is the only one I've ever used as an All-American. I know Presto is a popular one. Um, they have a lot of new stuff like digital pressure canners and stuff, but the, the rules on those are a lot of times unclear. The instructions are a lot of times unclear. And I haven't really gotten into that. I've just done this and I've done it enough that I feel really confident with it. I started with just a couple inches of water in the pressure canner. Um, I've got made sure everything is clean. And what I do because this is the all American does not have a gasket. Um, so the metal goes on the metal and so you have to oil it. So I put some um, just some avocado oil on a napkin and rubbed it all the way around. This water was warmish, but I didn't want to get it boiling hot because I was putting that cold broth into it. With When it comes to anything with canning, you have to be careful about 
uh, temperature shock because that's how you break glass jars is with temperature shock. Too cold meeting too hot suddenly will break glass. So I just put it on the heat with the jars in so that it could slowly warm up and, and warm the contents of the jar also. So I'm going to do the top of my canner here. I loosely put them all on. There's a little arrow here that lines up. And I loosely put it all on because there's this space right here. And we want this to be about equal all the way around the canner. And it's, it's very obvious in person if you don't have it equal. In which case you just kind of have to loosen everything and wiggle it around to make sure. And what you want to do is you actually want to tighten down the knobs that are opposite of each other and do it a little bit at a time so that you can maintain that equal space. Now if there's anything at all on the rim of your pressure canner, it will allow steam to leak out the sides, which will keep you from getting the pressure that you want. So you need it to be very clean, well oiled, and then equally uh, tightened down. I do can on a glass top stove. Um, that's not, that's not recommended, but it's the stove that I have and I've been canning on it this whole time. It hasn't broke yet. So I think the concern is, is if you've got too much weight on it, obviously if you drop anything on it and then some of these, the way that they conduct heat doesn't work well with a canner, but mine does fine. So I'm going to let this sit here for like as long as it takes. It's on high heat now and eventually steam is going to start coming out of this little valve here. So there is an emergency release pressure valve. There is this which measures the pressure and then we've got this release and once the steam starts steadily coming out I'm going to set a timer for 10 minutes which is going to let that vent to make sure that we don't have any blockages which is what makes sure that we're doing this safely. And then once that has been venting for 10 minutes uh, and that timer goes off, I'm going to take this weight and I'm going to put it on the 10 right here, which is 10 pounds of pressure. And I'm going to set it on top of this flat valve blocking it. And when that happens, I'll, I'll catch back up with you guys. I'll turn the camera back on then. All right. So we've been venting here for 10 minutes. I'm going to carefully put the weight on my canner. And I'm going to wait for the first rattle to start my timer, which should not take long. Um, and when that first rattle goes off, I'm going to set my timer for 90 minutes because these are quarts of broth. And so you pressure can quarts of broth for 90 minutes. If there were pints, I would only do 75 minutes. And um, that's the case for a lot of meat stuff. So like when you're canning like ground beef and stuff, it's the same. Um, but yeah, so I'm going to wait for this first rattle. And then I'm going to start minding the frequency of the rattle. Canning, especially pressure canning, is something you do while you're going to be in the kitchen. You don't walk away from this. That's fine. There's my rattle. Okay, so the first one. I'm going to drop the heat down. It's on high right now, and I'm going to go to about medium. Um, because right now, that that's rattling. It's letting off steam, which is that it's letting off enough steam to maintain about 10 pounds of pressure. So I need to let the heat come down because we basically want to get to the point that we're hearing at least one rattle per minute for the 90 minutes um, that we're canning. So see, I dropped the heat and now it's settling, which is good. Uh, but I don't want to drop the heat too low because if we're going over a minute with no rattling, then I'm not holding enough pressure. I know this feels very uh, overwhelming at first. It just rattled again, so that's good. Um, it's slowing down, but it's not slowing down so much that it's not holding pressure. This does feel overwhelming at first. Eventually, rest assured, eventually you get to the point that you're so used to it that like, you're hearing it, it's not stressing you out, but you know you're gonna notice if it were to like stop rattling, or you know you're gonna notice if it's rattling too consistently. It is not an, a precisely exact science, it's just for the sake of safety, you wanna be aware of what you're looking for. So that rattle was about, what, 30 seconds since the last one? Yes, because I turned my camera on and this is 39 seconds into the clip. So that's okay. Um, if it keeps rattling once every 30 or 40 seconds, I would consider that an okay temp to keep on. If it started to rattle longer or much more frequently, I would just bump the heat down a little bit. 
if a minute passed and I wasn't hearing rattle, I would bump the heat up a little bit. And then you just play with that for an hour and a half. And it's not that hands-on. Like eventually like you, it gets to the point that you're literally like not paying any attention to it at all. You just hear it and you, you get to where you know all of your stuff. You know your stove, you know your canner, you get familiar with how it all works and you don't have to mind it as much. You just are on autopilot more. All right, I'm working on multiple projects in my kitchen right now. Not just this video, but uh, the canner's done, so I put the weight on, listened for the jiggle. Um, at the end, after the timer went off and the 90 minutes had passed, you turn the heat off and just leave it alone, don't move it, until the pressure comes down to zero, which you can see right here. And then you just go ahead and pull this off. There's a little bit of steam left in there, but not a lot. You don't want to pull this off when the pressure's super high. And now I wait even longer um, and let it sit there till there's absolutely nothing that's vented out. And at that point, I'll open this up and pull these jars out to cool. Now, a lot of times I'm canning in the evening before I go to bed. And um, a lot of times I am optimistic when I start the canner and thinking that I'll have no problem staying up that late. But I turn into a pumpkin when it gets late at night. So I... Um, a lot of times I just turn the heat off and then go to bed and then that way it sits in the canner until the next morning and then of course all the pressure is gone and I can take the weight off, take the lid off, take the jars out. Um, as of right now though I'm going to prep some chunks of pumpkin to go in the canner as soon as this stuff is out. Hey y'all, so it's evening now and I've had a fairly productive day, just not as productive as I thought I would on the things I thought I would be productive on. Um, right now, I've still got the canner going. Now it has pumpkin in it, cubed pumpkin. Um, here is the broth that we were canning earlier. So a lot of times when I pull jars out of the canner, they've got a little bit of uh, like buildup on them. I'm pretty sure this is just because we have well water. So I usually let them sit until they're cooled off. These are still a little warm and then I wash them with a wet rag. Uh, this broth had a little bit of sediment in it. I should have strained it out before I canned it, but it's fine. I mean, the sediment that's in it is edible. It's just not necessarily desirable. So when I go to use that broth, I'll just run it through like a fine mesh strainer before I throw it in whatever soup pot or whatever it is that I'm cooking with it. Um, turn that down a little bit. I have a bunch of pumpkins. I showed in my last vlog that we are pumpkin rich after our pumpkin harvest. And this is a smaller pumpkin that I pulled out today. Um, this one I got out of the pantry, so it was one of the early ones that we picked. And I filled seven quart jars of cubed pumpkin. And I didn't even use the whole thing, which is a very sobering realization of how much pumpkin I actually have on my hands. Um, so I think I'm actually gonna cut up the rest of that one and roast it to go with dinner. And I have a couple of duck breasts in the fridge from processing ducks this week um, that I'm going to cook for dinner as well. And this really wasn't a tutorial, but I hope it did give you a little bit of confidence if you are currently sitting on a pressure canner that if you have yet to start using. Um, I do think finding something that is simple that doesn't require just a ton of prep work is a really good way to like start the canning process because it can give you confidence without you overthinking it. So obviously if you have to spend an hour or two prepping something to can it and then you're nervous that you're going to mess up, it may be a reason you talk yourself out of it. So I like to suggest the baby carrots thing, but if you've got something that you grew that needs to be processed, that's also a really great option. Another thing is ground hamburger beef for pressure canning. Um, that's something that has to be pressure canned. And for me, having canned ground beef on hand, it's like, it's my go-to for like a fast dinner that I didn't thaw anything out and I need to make something because I can open a can of ground beef and like add spaghetti sauce and boil noodles and I've got dinner ready with very little forethought. Uh, it does change the texture. Whenever you're pressure canning anything, I mean, you have to think you're cooking these things for extended period of time on really high heat. I don't consider it to be like the best means of preservation. I mean, it's a good means of preservation. All means of preservation have their merits. 
Um, I think everybody who's going to be growing food should probably learn to can because it definitely does open up an option to preserve things, to create convenience foods, and to free up freezer space. Uh, but you are cooking the heck out of food. And so, like, you are losing some measure of the nutrient factor whenever you're cooking anything at that high heat for that long. Uh, and so like with the ground beef, it changes its texture a little bit, but I still do it and I still like having it because if you're trying to like not eat convenience foods and frozen foods, or if you're, you know, you're not going to run through a fast food window, it's definitely nice to have a fast option for dinner. I actually pressure can a lot more during the fall. During the summer, I do what I have to do as far as preservation goes, and there's a good deal of it, but... The fall seems to be when I restock all of my like canned meats and of course doing things like pumpkins and potatoes and all of that. So thank you guys for hanging out with me today and all the days that you do. Get your canner out of the box. I bless you. Until next time.